Oh, Your Majesty. That's a song I want to do. Oh. That's okay. a song I want to do. Um, you got to pick the keto. Uh. <laughs> pressure on Sebastian. Pressure. I'm like, I don't know why I get all this pressure, man. Why, pressure. why all this pressure on me? Oh, um, pressure. I'm gonna pick an easy key this time. Nah, don't pick an easy oh, key. Man. Challenge me, no. man. <laughs> okay, let's take it all the way to A. All right. <laughs> Some of the things you did in there to kind of put right. your stamp on it. Reharm again, but before I get to the reharm, there's like um, some parallel movements that a lot of keyboardists like to do, and I think that um, most, if not every keyboardist, should have this move in their arsenal. Um, Like these parallel kind of octave yeah, movements yeah. that are within the chords. Even after those parallel octave moves, there was a chord that I went to that wasn't exactly the regular minor, like G-flat minor chord that most people go to. So... Ooh. Right. So <clears throat> I guess you could say that this would be... I guess you could say instead of me playing like a regular G-flat minor chord, you could say I'm playing a D on top of the G flat, the, the G minor, the, sorry, the G flat, right? I'm playing this D on top of it. Mm -hmm. But instead of me using the F sharp as the, 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 the top note, I'll just use the A flat. Right, so. So. Uh, Right, that's a weird sounding chord yeah. right there. That's another Randy it's Jenkins man. Kind of like Randy in Jenkins. between. Yeah, kind of. That's the that's a Randy Jenkins special man. <laughs> the gospel guy. 
So that's, I mean, that's one of those like special chords you can just employ, not ad infinitum or every single place that you want, mm -hmm. but just, you know, sporadically, sparingly. Yeah, just drop it in. You know, drop it in every now and then, not every single time you play a chord, right? Because <laughs> I know when I first played it, I was overdoing it. And, and that's another thing. Like, I think as keyboardists, we have to be self-aware, Yeah. right? Because there can be times where we can overplay. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hold you. There's been times where I've overplayed. <laughs> that's just that's just what it's, it is. It's part of the process. It's part of, of the learning. process yeah. of learning. It's part of the process of trying your best to like not overdo it and to be as tasteful as you can. Um, or to probably, I guess you could say, sound like a record every time you play. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or at least approach it that way or whatever. So mm -hmm. like I know I overplayed in that first I know I overplayed. I felt it. <laughs> I felt that I did. You know, and I mean, there are some that may not agree, but I felt personally that I overplayed. Yeah. So I say that thing that I said before in the spirit of not overplaying and just being as, as measured as you can, you mm -hmm. know. So the thing is, you can always change the complexion of your chords because it's a, it's a ballad. Mm -hmm. You can always change it. But, I mean, not to the point where it, like, confuses the listener. But if you do something like this. Not bad. Mm -hmm. It's allowable. So it's 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 not a, it's not necessarily about um, how many great things you can play in that moment, but mm -hmm. about how you can slip them in and then you know yeah 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 subtleties subtleties. <laughs>